Welcome back everyone, it's time for the Warcraft news, and man, I've got a lot of updates for you. Okay, World of Warcraft is about to pick up millions of players. Yeah, literally, pretty big. One of the biggest fixes to crafting is actually out now in the beta. The login screen has been revealed, and it is, in fact, a wall. Yeah, brave choice. Also, Leech and Avoidance have been drop kicked into the sun and a whole bunch more. We're now less than a month away from the pre-patch, pretty much two months away from the expansion. Stuff is looking finalized, and if you want to look pretty damn fine, check out today's sponsor. Boot.dev forward slash Bellular, they're the best place to learn backend web development, and they will be teaching you using Python and Go and doing it the smart way by making it fun. Overall, it's an online self-paced platform, 100% designed to get you writing code and avoiding tutorial hell. You'll be working through RPG game inspired problems and Boot itself has got quests, levels, XP, boss fights, achievements, and you can get 25% off your first purchase with my link and code. Now, they have a very incredible, very complete learning path. And as I said, they weave in things that people like us like, because funny enough, they're big RPG and Warcraft fans too. Roleplay is woven throughout the courses as an example, developing and deploying a Pokedex, learning object-oriented programming by working through role-playing game combat-inspired examples. It's the sort of approach that leverages the sorts of things and concepts that we already understand to help the new concepts click. They have an amazing community Discord, but if you just want a little bit of a nudge into the right direction, they've got like the only AI chatbot experience that I've actually genuinely loved. It's pretty amazing, it's called Boots, and the way it works is, well, it doesn't give you the answer. It works you through the problem. It understands the, the, the stuff that you're doing. It is actually the first time that I've seen a chatbot actually be really well implemented. And in this case, not just giving you answers, but actually walking you towards solving the problem yourself. It was really impressive to me, actually. Anyway, boot.dev forward slash Bellular. They're an awesome bunch. If you head there, you can use code Bellular for 25% off your first purchase, and that is backed by their no questions asked 30 day money back guarantee. They've got free demos for all of their courses. You can try all that stuff out and take a look, take a sample. So boot.dev forward slash Bellular. Thanks to them, and let's go. Yeah, I'll admit that's probably the worst sponsor segue I've ever done. Anyway, World of Warcraft is about to start printing some money. It's finally coming back online in China. I won't bother you with all the details, but basically Natty's made this pretty nice little video of an animated Lily Stormstout telling people all about it. Then there's uh, a little bit of Jana Faris and Chris Metzen uh, giving a bit of a welcome back. So for them, Classic is already back up. There is a super fast version of Wrath Classic for people to go through, and then they're getting Dragonflight on August 1st. And then they'll actually be joining us in the War Within the very same day that we do so yeah that's a very fast dragon flight for them now they've got plans for a trading post catch-up increased xp to 70 and a bunch of bonuses to sweeten the deal they're also getting plunderstorm at some point because they missed it entirely and to restart the raiding scene something quite cool netties are offering a bounty of a million yuan which is just under 140 grand to any chinese group good enough to win the race to world first not like the chinese race to world first no it's the race to world first you know, world, that thing we're all on. That does mean that Echo and Liquid eventually may need to watch out. And I say eventually because that prize pool will be going up by 27 grand every tier until a Chinese guild is good enough to claim it. So at the very least, that'll make for a good story. As for what this means for the game, I mean, honestly, not that much for us in a very direct sense, but indirectly, it actually could matter quite a bit. So they're actually getting back on board pretty much in time for the World Soul Saga. That's obviously quite important. I mean, if they only got back, say, one expansion in, that would would be way harder to uh, to sort of start to properly get into. Now, this does mean more money for World of Warcraft. Yes, a lot of money will be going to Netties. They're running all the operations over there. But basically, they are playing the same World of Warcraft that we are, even though there is a sort of complex, uh, you know, business relationship. That overall should mean, right, more resources to World of Warcraft, which, broadly speaking, is in our interests. As is the next story, at least if you're a crafter, this is really good news because the long-promised NPC crafting order system is on beta. Now, there's still some problems to work out, but it's basically intended as the primary way for players to guarantee progression and to remove just pain points, right? The pain point of you can't progress because uh, you can't find a player to craft for. And to sweeten the deal, they've also made this quite replay friendly. So the NPCs are familiar characters and they have 
have personalities. Some of them will offer bonus rewards, others will be a little bit more picky and try to skimp and reagents, and some will give everything at high quality. There's also some baked in catch up here, so as early as after week one, some catch up orders will appear so that crafters don't fall behind in terms of knowledge points. So that alone is a massive improvement to the feature, but of course there is also the changes to concentration, which basically mean that this should be making good on quite a bit of the the promise of the Dragonflight overhaul. The next thing then is to talk about combat because, uh, well, Leech and Avoidance have been totally gutted. They haven't been removed entirely, but their effectiveness has been cut to ribbons, and by ribbons I mean roughly half. If your gear is giving you 10% Leech and Avoidance, now it will be 5%, and almost all sources of those stats from Talents have been reduced by around half and then rounded up. The rationale is that these were just getting too strong toward the end of an expansion, and it is kind of hard to disagree. The high amounts of leech has always been a part of the healer design debacle that, uh, you know, the community's been having over the last while. And with less variation in how much avoidance a player has, that means that if your gear was giving you 10% leech and avoidance, now it will be giving half. And almost all sources of those stats from talents have been reduced by around half and then rounded up. Now, the rationale here is that by the end of an expansion, this stuff was just getting way, way, way too strong. Some players could have loads of these stats and they would just uh, be way more tanky. And that ended up being a problem in the design design of healers, right? Because when there is a hell of a lot of self-sustain in, say, DPS players between leech, avoidance, and defensives, then it actually means that Blizzard have got to start hitting those DPS players really hard in order to actually be a threat, and that's just caused a hell of a lot of issues with, I mean, gameplay, feeling like you're randomly one shot, and uh, of course for healers having more stressful reactive gameplay rather than sort of management and resource efficiency gameplay, which is what a lot of healers I think would really prefer. It's just that challenging thing where, yes, self-sufficiency as a DPS feels really good, but then it can just cause other issues and then eventually bite you, the DPS, in the ass. Now, another bait update, it's kind of blown our socks off, it's lots of UI cleanup. I mean, we did a video about it and then the bastards just went and did even more UI stuff. For real though, this is good. One of our constant problems was the map, right? Just having lots of icons all over the screen and people not really knowing what all of them mean exactly. So the good news is they've added a legend to just go and explain what those things are. That is great, some could say. It's game-changing behavior when put on top of everything else. And I'm not even joking, like, the end game flow is crazy complicated at times, but now you can, at a glance, see what events are, how long you've got to do them, you can filter out the things you don't want to see, and check what strange icons mean. It's just lots of really nice things. As an example, no more horn icons for all world events. Now those have got their own unique ones. So I think this, along with delve icons telling you if they're bountiful and if you have keys, highlights for portals and tunnels that act as shortcuts between zones, and then my favorite, feedback and instruction on icons. Like take a look at this one saying you need to finish a certain quest to unlock world quests, or maybe this one that tells you how long you've got left on a weekly quest. I mean, it finally feels like we're getting UI features that just should have been there for years. Um, so that bit kind of sucks, but big picture, this is really good for the readability of the game. Next then, I've got some tiny laser targeted updates. Now there are 30 macro slots per character up from 18. That's minor, but actually for some people that will make a pretty big difference. And if you're one of them, let us know what you use all the slots for. Then there's other minor changes like honor will be transferable between characters. It's yes, a warband currency. Now there is a 20% tax, yes, but it does mean that you can farm up honor on your main and then you can just get lots of PVP gear on your alt right away. So even though there is a 20% tax, that does go a long way to just getting your character basically kitted out. I think that's fantastic. Next then, class changes. And yeah, even though we're like two months away from the launch, big moves are still happening. Hunters have lost death chakram. So uh, yes, rip shadow ones. Uh, to some, this is a positive. To some, it's a betrayal. So there is some mixed feedback on that one. And survival hunter feedback is also being carefully looked at for the next build or two to fix some obvious issues that people pointed out. As for shamans, your time is almost here. Next week will be your week in terms of changes. A blue post on the forums this week announced that they have been working very hard and they've got a package of changes is almost ready to go. Meanwhile, then, lots of other classes have been fine-tuned, like Arcane Mage is getting a ton of new talents, and Holy Paladin getting Glimmer removed. Yeah, Glimmer. That's been a major thing for them since, like, uh, well, you know, the first appearance of Glimmer. Kind of crazy to me. Glimmer has been super important since it initially was there uh, as an Azerite trait. Anyway, it's a bit of a scary patch note for some because the Glimmer playstyle had ended up being quite popular, but according to healer mains like Automatic Jack, the changes to Holy Power Spenders and Holy Shock's base power have been really fantastic. So, uh, yeah, it looked rough for a second, but it does seem like that's good news. And for me, considering I'm probably going to main a Paladin, uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy. 
happy. Next, then, the login screen, where uh, I'm not happy. I don't really think anyone is. It's fine. I mean, it's not. It's not like some terrible, offensive, awful thing. It's just, I think, kind of lackluster, you know, break from tradition. I mean, unless it's got some sort of crazy animations attached to it that just aren't there in beta, you know, it just kind of looks a bit dark and sad. And I suppose one criticism that I would have that actually comes from my experience making video thumbnails for like so many years. Well, one of the problems you have in UI is when you have loads of clusters of detail. So you've got your, uh, you know, your login box, right? You've, you've got those bits of UI. Um, those are sitting there on top of all of the like searing, like white hot cracks in Azeroth. And that just means you've got all these bright lights sitting underneath your UI. That looks really, really messy. Like if we did that in a thumbnail, it would uh, get a way lower click through rate because people's eyes would look at the big cluster of detail, get scared and latch onto literally anything else. Now look personally, I know we've not had a traditional dark portal for a while, but even a shot of, I don't know, like a fissure staring at Baldar or like something of the world soul would have been nice. I don't know. Like, look, it's the login screen. You don't spend that much time on it unless there's, uh, I don't know, login queues, but it is an iconic part part of the legend of World of Warcraft, and I do feel that this one just doesn't really stand up to the rest. Anyway, there's another bit of news, and that is that Season of Discovery Phase 4 has a release date, July 11th, which is 12 days before our pre-patch. Raids are being staggered, though. World bosses turn on July 18th, and Nixia and the 20-man Molten Core come out July 25th. Once again, it's a 1 p.m. PDT worldwide launch, and there's a whole bunch of updates, and there's new, of course, undatamined content, probably things that, you know, that will run into. Now, I think I'm mostly going to be paying attention to the lore stuff. So this is coming out very, very close to the war within. And throughout Season of Discovery, there's been the plot line of whatever the hell the shadowy figure is doing. Now, if that shadowy figure is Zalatath and the things that she's been doing, I don't know, like back in time or these things that she has maybe, uh, you know, that she's being revealed to have done in the past. I mean, maybe they could be relevant. And of course, there's a host of other really, really cool, uh, like lower topics that appear throughout Season of Discovery. Maybe we'll get some sort of Ashbringer quest even. It actually could be pretty cool. Finally then, some endgame beta impressions because that's what some of us have been doing this week. Now, Mythic Plus changes. You've probably seen the video. Basically, I praise the hell out of them. I think it's a really, really good direction to start going in. And looking about, the community largely does seem to agree. People basically like this. But we do have a little bit of feedback from gameplay. So, take Zalatat's Bargain, which is the set of four new affixes. Big picture, I think great. I like the ideas that they're going with. There are some ways in which at least one of them does go against some of what Blizzard said about affixes. So, Ascendant, the one with the orbs that fall down, that does require require a ton of AoE stops, right? It requires you to hold them instead of using them in mobs, and it happens on a rough timer. And that does mean that people will be able to track it with an add-on or weak aura, and that will create a fairly chunky skill gap. And of course, if it then, because it's on a timer, starts to overlap with boss abilities, uh, then you could have problems, especially like lots of nameplates just appearing in your screen at an inopportune time where all of those nameplates, by increasing the sort of information density well, that reduces a lot of the playability of the game. So that could be really annoying. Now, the effect itself, I think, is fun to deal with. And the Kiss Curse element is strong. I mean, 20% haste feels really, really good. But there's just some usability stuff. I think it's just stuff inherent to whenever something happens on a timer in a dungeon. Uh, you know, a sort of a soft timer. I imagine it's not going to be something you can turbo cheese. Now, are there ways around this? Like, I, I don't know. I mean, in my head, I would say perhaps we could designate what mob packs an ability like that actually happens on and that maybe by doing that blizzard could uh, not put it on mob packs where it could uh, create design issues not exactly sure and maybe it's just the case that they don't want to do all the manual work and play testing there hard to say but i at least feel that this direction for affixes is the right one now then in terms of content we're planning a video on how the story feels to play through on beta but here's some feedback directly after doing a full run of the story and hitting level 80 and it is that this is a good expansion, and the amount of stuff to do when you hit level 80 feels overwhelming in a good way. The characters are compelling, the performances are actually pretty great, and the actual story events are decently dramatic and engaging, and some of the main quest chains are actually fun to play. Halifall and Ashkahet are particularly great, and they're going to be even better whenever there's music and full cutscenes. Now, this is not going as hard as Warlords of Draenor, not really close because WAD actually went really hard in its level up experience, but what this is, it's probably the best level up 
campaign we've had since Legion, and of course it still is made by the Dragonflight team, and that does also appear to mean loads of really, really good side quests. So that's basically that for the week. We are going to have loads of content coming up on the channels next week, but we did publish a hell of a lot this week, so you can check out those videos in case you missed any. With that said, have a brilliant weekend, and I'll see you back here on Monday.